Yo, yo, you know what it is. It's your boy E.L. Young Glummy, the bars in the building. Gonna boys the world we go. You're checking out your cassette TV right here on YouTube. Everything entertainment, everything news. Bolly, but no more fear. E.L. baby, let's go. Yo, welcome to Yeah Cassette TV. Uh, my name is Jabril, aka Junior Degree, aka Facebook Assembly Man. Uh, this is quite new to me. Uh, I've started interacting and I've started having talks with um, people in and probably out of the entertainment industry. We 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 want to have a cool discussion and then share ideas and probably make suggestions on to how we can help ourselves as creative arts um, people, even as humans as well. Today I'm here with um, a friend of mine. Actually, uh, we've only met twice. Once was uh, 2016, when we were all doing a project, uh, some SICA project, but <laughs> after that we've never met again. We keep chatting on Facebook, on WhatsApp, the conversation he's kind of like a brother now yeah one once a while he helps me on some stuff i mean so we have decided that um with this episode i have an interaction with him because um personally my brother here is is is, is broad-minded he has a lot of experience he has worked with artists he has he has worked with ngos and I'm, I'm sure he, he has some personal stuff he does for himself as well. And so I would want us to break down some stuff and, and know what is actually happening. We'll, we'll move into the entertainment industry as well. His experience, what he thinks about Ghanaian entertainment industry. Today I have with me Justice Okai, right? Alote. Yeah, Okai Yes, Justice Alote. I know him as Justice Alote. I'm trying to always mention the Okai because it's part of the name. Yeah. And so... Um, let me introduce him as as Justice Alote, and then we can take it off from there. This is Yekasa TV. Please subscribe and uh, do as much as possible to go on Instagram as well and follow us on Yekasa TV. The Yekasa TV is Y E K A S A TV. We'll give you insights. We'll give you um, trendy informations. We'll give you uh, stuff that you would be interested uh, in in following. Justice. First time, first guest on yeah. Yekasa TV. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you too for allowing me to be on your show. Um, I have known you for a while now, Sharp. since 2016, like you mentioned. Yeah. But um, um, I think we've always been interacting yeah. on Facebook yeah. and sharing ideas mm -hmm. and working on issues. So yeah. I think this is an opportunity for me to um, also share a few ideas that I have around sharp, sharp. entertainment and some of the works that I've done and mainly um, general um, works that I believe can shape the narrative around um, exactly. music and the music business and, that. Mm -hmm. and also any, th any ideas that I, I want to share. There. Sure. Let's, let's start with you as, as um, when, when, when I meet people and they are, uh, do you know Justice? I'm like, yeah, he's an IT guy. He is into the web and stuff. Give me a brief um, of what you do. Let let me and my followers know what you do. Okay, so now um, I would say I'm more of a digital strategist now, okay. um, but I've worked as a digital amplifier for um, a company, Impact Abaka. I've done business development for a software company. Um, I've volunteered in several capacities, one for the Wikimedia Foundation, one, two for um, several NGOs that I've been involved in. Yeah. And so I would say, um, um, I, on the free side too, I also do photography. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so those are like some of the things that I do. Oh. Um, but now I'm focusing mainly on digital strategy, yeah. um, digital um, engagements online, how to, digital reputation, how to, as a company or as a person, you should be able to control your online narrative and also have reputation online because those I believe are very important moving forward now. With with what you just said, digital strategy and stuff, meaning you, you deal with individual, you deal with brands uh, to project their their image in, in online for the uh, for people for the masses to be able to identify them anywhere they see them that that that, should, that in, in short is that what yeah so mainly I have worked with um, 
um, companies or like social enterprises more than I've worked with individuals. Okay. But from time to time, I advise individuals on how to go on their digital engagements and their strategy and all that. So it's it's a, a field where I'm I'm I would say I've been doing it for five years. Um, it's been growth after growth after growth, and we're still learning and we're still growing. So. Let's go to the individual side of it. Um, I am I'm previewed. You've worked with the artists as well. Uh, what's the difficulty with our artists here in Ghana that you have worked with? What do you think they aren't doing right? Since you got closer to them, or probably you've worked one way or the other with them, what aren't they doing for their digital platforms to 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 make themselves big and reach the other countries like Nigeria and South Africa? I feel Ghanaian musicians or Ghanaian artists, um, they they are not, like their online presence um, is much to be desired of. Okay. Um, mainly, most of them are talking about maybe, um, if it's not a show they are promoting, they are promoting their music. Okay. There's no engagement strategy, there's no way of like, um, reaching out to new people yeah. like it's it's always feel like yeah it's a it's a sequence yeah. um, i'm releasing an album i release an artwork i do um, dance competition i do but the 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 online engagements goes beyond yeah, that okay. so there are several ways of engaging there's yeah. tiktok now there are so many platforms that you can Engage. really grow your audience and also own them yeah. now zoom has an opportunity for people to and meet and talk and Google Meet to allow. So maybe yeah. you can do like a Google Meet hangout where you invite some of your fans, fans yeah. to come listen to your music, yeah. critique it. Yeah. This you can record and then you put online. This is also content. Okay. But I feel most of them restrict themselves. Sometimes you understand it's the, the environment that we are in. Yeah. People um, really are, are struggling. Yeah. So it, they have to do things that would make them become popular and popularity in Ghana they say sells. Yeah. So once they get become popular then they might get shows and then they might but I feel they are, they don't take their digital presence seriously. You 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 work with the digital side of it. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and all those things. Looking at our entertainment space, the Ghanaian artists or um, creative arts guys, which particular um, social media platform that's in respective of Facebook, Twitter, which of them do you think that they focus much on and, and they, are, they are doing well with? I think a lot of them are on Instagram. Okay. okay. Yeah, so Instagram, I've seen a lot of them yeah. engage on there. Yeah. But I feel they can, it's, they need to know the market. So Instagram was set up for a purpose. Yeah. Twitter was for a purpose. Yeah. Facebook was for a purpose. I see a manifest more active on Twitter because I've seen that he recognizes that that's where majority of his fans are. So he always engages them in conversations. Okay. And I've seen that recently he's doing a scale-up campaign where he's asking people who are in, in the startup field how they are scaling up, okay. which is like for me, it's like somebody who's listening to the ground yeah. and knowing what his people what? are into. Because okay. you might say majority of manifest fans are maybe intellectual, yeah. middle class people. Yeah. And so startup or entrepreneur, entrepreneurship yeah. is something that they enjoy. enjoy yeah. So yeah, so this would actually pull them more to focus on him and the conversation that he's beginning to have with them yeah. is going to actually grow him more audience, which is smart. And so this is an example of an artist who is listening to the times and moving according to it. So it, as, as, as an artist, you definitely need to put yourself on the, on the grounds and be able to identify the, the low points or your artists or your, 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 I mean your fans and yeah, be able yeah. to follow what um, they, they feel or they want you to go through. Yeah. Um, do you think that, we've used manifest, do you think that most of the artists in Ghana, irrespective with the A-list artists, do they actually listen to their fans and what they, their fans want them to do? You, you get um, at, uh, fans saying, oh, I met so-so and so at this event. He wasn't even smiling. He wanted to take a picture, his bodyguards or whatsoever. They were trying to give them distance. Do you think that Ghanaian artists give that leverage or that, that platform for their fans to interact with them? Well, 
I think some do, but not all. Um, I am saying so in the sense that, aside most of them, so like the militants and the uh, SAC nation yes, and the what being yeah. nation and the whatever, those are like they are like political um, parties, party followers. Yeah. No matter what you do, they are they called to you. Yeah. So those people, regardless of what you push, they will support. Yeah. But how are you engaging people out of those circles? Yeah. How how are you measuring the comments to see? Who is a fanatic and who is actually giving me criticisms or comments that would actually mean something to yeah. my career as an artist? So I feel there are so many ways they can do that. But clearly, maybe it's only manifest that I've seen as a digital trajectory over the time. When Google Plus used to be like big and mm -hmm. everybody, I, I, I met, like I was also, because at that time I was growing up with the uh, digital stuff. Yeah. And so I was on Google Plus, the manifest was engaging fans and all that. Mm -hmm. And around that time, we got an opportunity to meet him through uh, Vlisco. Okay. So then they took us to the Vlisco shops. We then did an interview, we took photos with him. We had lunch and everything with manifest. And these were the times when the internet was growing. Yeah. So that's why I feel like Manifest is one of those artists mm -hmm. that pays attention to digital and is growing his digital engagement over time. Okay. Um, you follow music very well because I know that. In respective of genre, music genre in Ghana, um, hip life, hip hop, high life, Afro beats, reggae dance hall, which of these genres do you think that our artists Actually, they are doing it, but they are not doing it right. Well, it will be hard to point point to point point like one general. Oh. But I feel um, I've seen a lot. So when you talk of Afrobeat, oh. there are musicians that are doing, doing well Af yeah. with Afrobeat. Oh. But also, I would think I would say maybe the alternative scene, oh. where that is where I've seen more quality music in oh. terms of sound. In terms of artistry, in terms of um, um, how the music is recorded and is done, and their performance, mm -hmm. and those are people who necessarily are not targeting the everyday Ghanaian, but they, are t they want their music to reach a certain stage. Yeah. And so I would compare. I would say those are people that want them to move their movie, mm -hmm. their music, like up, up. than maybe the hip hop is okay. Once you are hip hop and you excel more. Mm -hmm. You will go there. Okay. Once you're Afrobeat, Afrobeat is the new thing now. Mm -hmm. So once you do Afrobeat, which is good and people like it, people will listen to it. Afrobeat, there's controversy. Then Nigeria, Ghana, who bought it and that. Do you think, for me, I, I, I believe that Nigerians have done very well in projecting Afrobeat. Uh, with the likes of Benna Boy getting a beat, even a Grammy nomination, mm -hmm. that's a plus for Africa. Do you think that in Ghana there would be an artist that can pick us to that level where or there would be this set of artists that can pick us to that level where the Whiskits, the the videos and the Benna boys and the now Remy, right, mm -hmm. has been able to push Africa and even Nigeria in that aspect. Will Ghana be able to get to that level? Oh yeah, we, we are capable of getting to that level. Um, I see Kim Promise and I see the kind mm -hmm. of music he's churning out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because Kill Beats is the one behind most of his music. Because mm -hmm. when you listen to a lot of the songs that Kill Beats has uh, produced, produce. those songs transcend like Ghana to Nigeria yeah. to London to uh, wherever he yeah. goes. So I believe we, we are capable people. So I would say Kim Promise, I would say um, Kelvin Boy, because I've seen the work he's put into his act, his live performance recently that I followed it, and some of the songs that he releases, I'm, mm. I'm like, this guy is somebody who can carry Afrobeat to the next level from Ghana. Okay. And so I think we have like capable matches in, in the industry. Mm. Um, it's just that we just need to, we need to have a plan. Mm. And so if as a musician, you don't have a plan on how to move from Ghana to the rest of the world, it's, it's you are going to be, like doing it, um, maybe you get hits in here, and that will be it. You'll be known as a local champion. You you mentioned plan. Does that mean that our music system here, we we actually don't have that plan to say let's push this agenda? Do you think that even should in case um, I'm I'm putting this question because days ago I, I posted it on Facebook, or I I, I think I listened to was it Sarkodie or someone? Uh, 
he mentioned in an artist, I can't remember the name, he mentioned that, I think Shafawali, he mentioned that they need to have a plan and move forward. Do you think that with the situation uh, situation we have with our artists, would you think do you think that there's this going to there's going to be this unity that okay, um since Afro pop is, is kind of the new thing, let's all come together and help those doing Afro pop and push them to that level or let's let's draw a plan, something. Do you think that that can work within our art, uh, the the space? Um I I I doubt that could work. Uh, but my problem is um with um, uh, with music and the way our industry is, yeah. there needs to be systems in place. Okay. So systems for royalty collection, uh, systems for artists to get paid uh, when people use their song for uh, music videos and all those uh, things. Where people use their song for adverts and all. So all this system, I believe, once there's a, a system that accounts to people who are doing the work, uh, then we can talk of moving as a collective outside because when you talk of maybe south africa first, yeah. in south africa they have a, a, a very good royalty system uh -huh. where people can understand um, how much they earn in a quarter or in a month okay. and then they can do projections on things they can do too so those things should be the baseline things that should work okay. once we have a proper system in place uh -huh. now we can also think of moving across but now it's like few people are crossing over uh, those who have recognized that ghana here it's it's it's, it's making me stuck yeah and there's a guy called bright uh, he was um, one of he won the first um, big in ghana organized okay. by the fucking FOK and FOK, yes and bright now stays in the uk he's okay. in london uh -huh. and he you would see, you could see the trajectory that he's going. Right. His music is in commercials. Right. His music is in movies. Right. And so these are like things that we need to get right. Once we get this right, I think moving to the next step will be easy. And collectively, as a as a music a music body, right. they can say, okay, yeah, we we going. Right. And so once we have a system, the proper system, because there are several channels in the music business that I've come to know of. Yeah. And so all those channels, they need to be people who, are, who can do a good job at that. Yeah. And then once we do that, then maybe we can say that, okay, yeah, Ghana, when you talk of a and we have good a, a, a &R people, yeah. we have people who are good in publishing, we have people who are good in royalty man collection, managerial people stuff. who are good in management, mm. business development, because mm. music, it's, it's, it's a business. Yeah. And so you need to have a business development manager. Mm. And if you have a business development manager, he can help you move to the trajectory that you want to reach. Well, you're watching here Casa TV. Um, I'm here with Justice Alote. He's, he's a very good friend of mine. And I'm Jibril, a.k.a. Facebook Assemblyman. We'll be wrapping up, but uh, I would want to ask Justice uh, his top five artists in Ghana. Artists he thinks that are doing great. And uh, we as a, uh, as a country or as people have to push harder for them to reach the heights. Justice. Give me your first five artists that you think that look, these guys, they are doing massive and we need to help. Um, hmm. um, okay. Maybe a year or two ago, um, Stonewall would be number one. Okay. But in recent events, I would say I'll put Manifest number one. Uh, um, I'll put Akan. Akan number two. Uh -huh. I'll put um, Stone Boy number three. Uh -huh. I'll put Kelvin Boy number four. Number four. And I'll put Kim Promise number five. Number five. Stone Boy, that was like two years ago. Akan. Yeah. Manifest. Manifest. Kelvin Boy and Kim Promise. Yeah. <laughs> Tough list. Actually, these guys are doing very well. Um, Yes, I would also attest to that. And probably he would say, you have to help push them. Now, let's look at artists and their way of handling situations. We'll go into the beef aspect as well. Um, you see, people like me, or you, or other people like the video directors, the sound engineers, they work with an artist a month to a year later they come out saying 
oh this person is not grateful this person is not this and that and that it brings a whole lot of issues what do you think that our artists aren't doing well that is making people like us when we are French working with them and maybe we didn't gain what we're supposed to gain we come out to say that what do you think is the cause of this this particular situation well I think there are no proper documentation involved so okay. most of people have seen that are spoken that way uh, um, they came into contact with the artist through maybe a friend, a friend and so they decided to uh, like they help uh, and once you decide to help somebody, he can choose to be grateful or ungrateful. Yeah. But once there's a proper working relationship, like there are Contracts. timelines, there are contracts, there are certain things that have to be done. Uh. I know not everybody can afford such a thing, uh. but once you are able to put like proper things into play, uh. like you don't have to think of, oh, the artist is not grateful. Because sure. like, maybe you would also be in business, mm -hmm. you also want to rip off the artist. Mm -hmm. The artist too would want to rip off um, mm -hmm. the work that he's doing. Mm -hmm. So once there should be proper documentation mm -hmm. involved, and once all that are in place, I believe like we won't hear of the um, ungrateful. ungrateful and all those yeah. things. Yeah. Now let's talk about beats. I, we have had encounters. Uh, the beef started way back. Samini, Shatawale, Shatawale, Stone Boy, now Shatawale, Sakodie comes all the way to manifest Sakodie, Strongman Medical. Now the ladies also came into the scene. Uh, what's the name? Eno, Frida Rhymes, and uh, Sister Fia, and all those. Which of these beefs did you think? That, do you think that? Or did you have that uh, perception or feel that, look, it was healthy for us as, 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 as an entertainment sector, this particular beef here? Because you realize that uh, with the states where the Nas, the biggies were having, some people made cool yeah. chunks of money. People actually made stuff that made profits out of that particular thing. Which one of our particular beef did you think that was cool? And then, yes, uh, it was actually healthy and maybe kind of profitable for even the artists or anybody around them. So I think in the height of the uh, Shatawale Samini uh, beef, okay. mm -hmm. like I remember the Guinness Eruption concert, mm -hmm. like all those, cons the Movado shows, shows, that was where the genesis started yeah. from. And so I think for that would be maybe something that was profitable because uh -huh. I remember I went to the Guinness Eruption show mm. like it was massive like people Samini was the last person to perform mm -hmm. people thought oh there won't be people there to listen to me mm -hmm. but there were people there and like he killed it yeah. and those were times that I was actively involved in that beef I was also I was like no I'm, I'm a Samini guy and yeah. it was fun for me but also another one that I would say was also fun was manifest and exactly. yeah. I, I liked it because of like the wordplay and mm -hmm. the whole rap because I, I grew up on rap. rap yeah. So rap music for me is everything. Mm. And so I like the fact that Manifest and Sarko, there was more like... So you get people saying you have to go and pick a dictionary and then listen to the words of Manifest and then, you know, get the meaning and be able to uh, reason with it. <laughs> so it was, it was like, yeah, those were like times where People were using lyrics to throw shades or others, and yeah. that was fun for me. I feel beef should be healthy, yeah. and um, the way I I see our music industry, yeah. it thrives on controversy. Yeah. Once there's no controversy, like presenters are not asking questions that would stimulate like serious answers from mm -hmm. the musicians that they interview. Mm -hmm. It's always about like what are you wearing, who are you mm -hmm. dating. Mm -hmm. I feel music should transcend that, like. It should be about what inspires your music. How, uh, what elements can be found. But in are you sure the viewers would want to listen to that? Well, are they ready? Are they ready to to hear what inspires your music? Uh, when you wake up in the morning, what comes into mind before you go into the studio to record? Are they willing to know where the process of setting? I think when you feed people something for a long time, they get used to it. And okay. same process, you can re allow them to unlearn some of these things sure. and then relearn new ways of doing things. Yeah. I listen. I listen to um, conversations in the states yeah. and interviews, yeah. and you see that these are like talk-provoking interviews. Like yeah. they ask questions that are very like engaging. Yeah. 
quite recently the the whole Jada Pickers meet and um, mm -hmm. August are seen that it started from an interview. Yes. Um, Angela Yee interviewed August on a, a number of things yeah. and so he was sharing his story and he mentioned about the August um, the Jada yeah, issue. Yeah. And so those were like even before that came out you I listened to the Breakfast Club a lot, oh. and I listened to the how they interviewed their guest. Yeah. Initially, Samuel Chalamet was viewed to be like the Jack um, uh, presenter, okay. where yeah. he would ask any kind of stupid question. Yeah. But over the years, you've seen that he's grown to be somebody who is very thought-provoking, and, and every musician wants him to interview him, yeah. so that he can like also get, get that, the, leverage, yeah. that leverage that he deserves. Yeah. And so, I feel we are we need to do better. Yeah. There are so many. Um, e events um, in town. Mm. There are so many issues mm. that musicians can speak on. Yeah. There's the Black Lives Matter issue. There's mm. issues around yeah, yeah, yeah. women yeah. and feminism. There's issue around um, um, rape, rape apologies. Like those are conversations that I feel we, we can have in about. a much more controlled environment mm. and a much more like enlightening way, mm. so that people can understand these issues better. A lot of them look up to the musicians and. Yeah. We are tired of the beefs and we are tired of the controversial stuff. We need things that would move people to think critical of the environment that they are in. Charlie, we will talk uh, because there's there's much, there's in-depth within. You are into um, writing articles and uh, projecting people on Wikipedia. How is this done? Uh, do do you do you advertise people? To, uh, do you advertise to let people come on, or you? How how do you do your stuff there? So Wikipedia, first of all, is a is a free platform yeah. where it wants to. So there's a tagline for Wikipedia saying it wants the world to share in the sum of all knowledge. Okay. So they want every knowledge from every part of the world mm. can be found on Wikipedia, okay. and so that's the main focus of Wikipedia. Mm. And also, so once you uh, that's the main focus, mm. it's falls to um, notability. Okay. So we only put notable um, people yeah. or events that are notable on Wikipedia. Yeah. So I would say when you pick maybe um, COVID-19, yeah. COVID-19 is a notable event. So when you go on Wikipedia, you can find articles on COVID-19 in several languages in several countries okay. there's a general covid 19 article there's covid 19 pandemic in ghana okay. there's covid 19 in nigeria, nigeria, nigeria and all those places mm -hmm. and wikipedia is it's an encyclopedia okay it's not promotional mm. it's, it's not somebody's and it's not a profile of an extension of your profile yeah it's just encyclopedia so any content that goes on there should be something that could be backed by fact sure. and can be verified okay. and so I don't see why people need to pay to be on such a platform. Yeah. As um, we in the Wikimedia Ghana user group, yeah. um, the local chapter that worked with the Wikimedia Foundation, we found that uh, um, a lot of musicians pay for people to get on there. And yeah. because those people um, are not, um, they don't know no. the rules yeah. around it, yeah. their articles get deleted. And then they, they in turn come to see us they to help to them revive it. their so it makes your work yeah. difficult. And so once you understand that, you need to be notable. Mm. With notability, it means you need to have significant coverage online. Mm. So if I check somebody like Sarkodie, I search him on Google, mm. I should see a number of articles on Sarkodie that, that shows that Sarkodie is, is notable. Yeah. And so if you want to be on Wikipedia, mm. like I said, this is a free um, platform. A platform. Yeah just work on your PR or work on your um, online presence. Mm. Once you are found in so many articles, mm. editors okay. can see you and put you on there because they can say, oh, I saw a number of articles on this musician. Mm. And that's, it fits into my point where I say, like, interviews don't ask thought-provoking questions is that if you say something mm. and we can't verify what you say, Same. It's we can't we can't put it yeah. on Wikipedia and yeah. Wikipedia is an encyclopedia yeah. and so those are the things that they should focus more on yeah. and they should forget paying people because once you are notable trust me you would be on there I've written for a number of yeah. musicians yeah. that I I never contacted them I did for them yes. because I found them online and I found that, that they, this they need to deserve get it yeah. and real, this grew my interest in trying to help musicians get Wikipedia articles mm -hmm. and people in the arts. And so those are like some of the things that 
it has come to our attention. That's why I'm mentioning it. That, that don't pay anybody for Wikipedia. Yeah. It's against, first of all, it's against Wikipedia's yes, rules. Okay. And once you do that, you need to disclose that this is a paid for article That's on okay. Wikipedia. And once you disclose that, your scrutiny will be different. Mm. And so I believe like mm. people need to understand these processes. Mm. And there's so much information around that on online. Okay. People need to just go research more mm. or they can reach out to Wikimedia Ghana user group on Facebook, mm. Wikimedia Ghana on Twitter, mm. Or Wikimedia, Wikimedia GH on Twitter, okay. Wikimedia Ghana on, okay. on Facebook, Instagram. Instagram okay. Also, you can send us an email, okay. community at wmgh.org. Okay. And so once you do that, we are always ready to help people with their queries. And you, you kind of also train people on how to write yes. articles about that. Yes. That one too. So, so initially, we had a plan of um, actually speaking to music executives and musicians and, and doing like well. yeah and um, trying to teach them about Wikipedia because okay. we've noticed that the more people who are not write uh, write articles uh, the more it affects Ghana and uh, so the more articles get flagged for deletion yeah. gets vandalized gets uh, so much um, problems uh, and so we want to give them this knowledge uh, where they can learn for themselves and then they can start doing the right thing okay. and so i believe once they send us emails they go to our pages we are always there to interact with them and help them with any problem that they have do you mind i leave a number your number so that should in case someone wants to be part of those writing the articles can contact no, you no they should just go on our website okay. all the details are all right website. so i'll put the website uh, below so that you'll be able to follow and then sign up and then be part of those who also write articles yeah. for personalities and brands as well to just project them because I Wikipedia. Uh, initially I thought Wikipedia was like something that um, was um, like easy but I realized that the more I edited the more I began to understand that anything that you put the on there needs to be sourced so, yeah. and you need there's a process of writing really? an article okay. and so all these things gave me the idea of like the credibility of Wikipedia okay. that is is growing now because mm. when you check in the world it's like the fit in the world, like okay. people, the most viewed article and uh, websites Sites. in the world. Yeah. And yeah. so it shows you that people actually respect well, yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the uh, big Fortune 500 companies donate to Wikipedia because of its credibility. Oh, okay. Google gave $20 million to the Wikimedia Foundation okay. last year to help volunteers um, work on Wikipedia. So they pay for their mails, they pay for their edit, um, yeah, internet. their internet and mm -hmm. all. So okay. we, they don't pay people to actually edit, okay. but these small things that they use to help so that we can able to train more people to also edit Wikipedia. All right, so we are coming to an end. Uh, Justice is a good friend. Uh, we'll come more, we'll have more discussions. Uh, not only for entertainment. Uh, He's, he's also a volunteer for a lot of NGOs. We'll talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about the uh, gender equality and stuff, all those things, because uh, justice has a broad mind in terms of those things. So time to come, you would, you would find um, this content, kind of content uh, with I and Justice on, on, on Yekasa TV. Thank you very much for watching. Um, See you next time. But don't forget to subscribe and then follow us on Instagram as well at Yekasa TV. Subscribe to this channel for more updates. Thank you very much. See you next time.